Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to the Great War Western Front, a new-ish game out by the folks at Petroglyph Games. This is a real-time uh, tactical war game and also a turn-based strategic war game. It, mel it melds the two. Uh, we are playing in a long-running series as the Central Powers. This was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel, so if you're interested in following those, definitely follow the link in the description. But I won't bore you too long because we're over 20 episodes in here. All I will say is in our last episode, we attacked Epra. Uh, we managed to get it down to one defensive star. We are trying to push the northern flank or northern front back so we can assault Calais, which is where all British and Indian and Canadian forces deploy onto the map. Um, it's a big strategic point. And so uh, to do that, right now we have one hex that is adjacent to Calais. But to reduce that more quickly, we would like to get two what that means is our strategy has shifted to taking Epro, which is a salient and kind of a thorn in our side, and then Dunkirk. And once we get Dunkirk, then we'll have a two hex front uh, against Calais uh, without any weird bulges that require extensive amounts of troops to hold. This is our attempt to reduce Epra down to zero stars. We are going to be attacking for the first time without tanks in a little while. So like we've been fighting a lot with tanks and having a lot of success with tanks. But we're going in with just uh, with just infantry and artillery this time. So I'm kind of nervous and, and curious at the same time to see how this plays out. But uh, we'll see. Uh, this was taken from a live stream, as I said. So let's jump back into that. And I hope you guys enjoy. And this is, it looks like it's a similar map layout as the last one. With the two objectives. The one on the left and the, the one on the right. And the command post in the back right. We have not actually fought on this map though. Because so, unlike, or yeah, actually we have. Is this the same? No, this is a different one than we just fought in. Because there's no there's no force here. Also, command trenches nearly link up with command trenches on A. B is in a more semicircular position, or I guess oval-like position. They have a forest in front of them, though, so it might make sense to attack from B and then to the command post and swing west to A. I'm thinking that's actually the right approach on this battle. We don't have any armor. We do have 1,100 supply. Our artillery... So we can hit most of B from here? And a good chunk of A, but not much of the command post. If we put the already up here, we can hit. That's probably the better position for these light guns. All right, so three light guns. We'll do two heavy again. Put them on this. I think this is the best spot to put them. Okay. Balloon. Can we see B? We can see the front trench of B. We can also see part of A, so maybe we maybe we do buy a balloon for this map. Although we're gonna be attacking out of that direction, so maybe not. Um just in case we're gonna upgrade some of these trenches. in front of our artillery in case the enemy launches an attack in that direction. Okay, that puts a, a defensive line in front there. Let's prepare our assault force. Not going to upgrade their trenches because they're going to be going right out. Let's actually add some grenadiers in here too. Alright, so why is the trenches are firmly stocked up with our assaulting force here in the south at Y? That leaves room for one more unit up here in the north to help defend the trenches. 
And the artillery. And then just in case... We'll throw some barbed wire out front. The artillery pieces. Let's actually pull this one infantry unit out. And put them... Down here. I'm a little worried our artillery is a little vulnerable to that extent, to that end. All right, we'll put two MG nests in the south. Well, let's actually put a third MG nest down here. Oops, that's not the direction I wanted it facing. All right. We'll see. Gas, gas, gas. Hopefully not. All right, that'll save me 200 supply plus the 25% that will carry over. So let's hope they don't attack me. Down there. Down there. Down there. All right, actually, we'll do one reinforced mortar nest, too. Just because I'm assuming a reinforced... Well, no, they might die in one attack, too, from a tank. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Wonder if they'll do an Eastern Front DLC. I don't know that Petroglyph does a lot of DLC. I feel like they kind of... Like, they release their games fully, and then they kind of move on to their next title, it seems like. All right, let's move one of these infantry. I should have bought a cheap one in the south into this wood line so we can get some intel on the uh, trenches to our front and then soften them up. Meanwhile, where is their balloon? They will for sure have a balloon somewhere. No sign of it yet. I'm taking damage from an enemy sniper unit somewhere. Here it is. All right, there's its tether. Just like last time, boys. Take it out at the start of the battle. Four artillery pieces should be good, I think. Meanwhile, our uh, elite troops are taking some sniper fire. You say that, G, but I definitely notice a difference when I destroy the balloons, so I'm going to do it. Okay, no sign of any anything. There are troops here. All right, balloons going down. Rolling barrage. This guy's gonna die, but maybe, maybe. Oh no, they're gonna die. Should have waited. Like maybe we could we could silence the enemy till we got in range. You can see the enemy's morale is already reduced because they have fought two battles already this turn. We will get a little bit of hand to hand reduction of them, but not much. Right, we did spot there's an enemy trench mortar where I saw something back here, but I I didn't hone in on the launching point. Okay. Let's bring the reinforcement in. But in any event, killing balloons is definitely, in my opinion, not pointless for two reasons. One, they are a considerable point value when it comes to calculating victories. And two, uh, it does seem to, like, the AI might know where everything is, like, if that's, if that's the claim. But what I will say is when you do destroy their balloons, they do shoot less accurately. Hey, the enemy's launching an attack. By your leave, governor. Why is no one shooting at him? What the hell? Everyone just content to let him run up to my line and jump in the trench? Okay, well, we destroyed him in any event. Let's probe forward before we go full-blown charging out there. Could a tank have fared better taking out the balloon? 
yes. I mean, it probably would have done it cheaper. Well, maybe not cheaper, though, because tanks cost like 60, and I, I used four artillery bombardments, two sixes, and two nines, so I think we did the right thing. All right, so it doesn't look like there's a lot of enemy troops here. Yeah, but the the secondary troops, the um, troops on the adjacent hexes can shoot. They should have shot. Even if the grenadiers don't. Okay. They, I mean, they were in their firing arc, so... Okay, move forward, boys. Alright, we will start the rolling barrage now. Okay, so the enemy is firing some artillery on our attackers. We're just going to proceed as planned. The AMG nest in the second line was shooting at us, but I guess they stopped because they couldn't see anything. Our troops are hitting the trenches here and are overwhelming the enemy to their front. So that's good news. We'll hit the enemy units back here with our light guns. All right, so we should have a second line of reserves coming up now, which we're bringing here. They're close enough to, to leave in the safety of the trench, the relative safety of the trench. Also, since the enemy doesn't seem to be attacking our artillery positions, we'll move two units out toward this direction. We're also going to shift, begin shifting these troops through the trenches. Okay. Get these guys into that next line of trench. Move these through the command trench, the comms trenches. We're gonna need a reinforcement here. Come on, die. There we go. Okay. These troops are moving over open ground. That seems foolish. Let's go ahead and suppress those uh, trench mortars. Our second line of troops is up. We're going to go ahead and put them in the uh, in the trenches. These troops have also come up in the trenches. World War One is a thing. It, yes, it is a thing. Norp, thanks for the follow, by the way. Enemy troops are coming on the map here, so I'm assuming this is a spawn point, I'm guessing. Let's see. Alright, can I withdraw these guys and get some cash back? They're almost dead anyway. Let's go ahead and keep shelling this trench mortar. And the enemy is going to keep committing forces to this attack, I'm assuming. These trenches don't actually link up with the command trench back here, so that's not ideal, but... We're about a quarter of the way into this clock for this battle. Tanks would be nice, they'd bolster the morale of my troops, but... Okay, that did not attack me too. Okay. 
Okay. Alright, so we got the enemy trench mortars. Enemy troops coming up this way. I don't know if this is a large scale counterattack or not. We shall see. We haven't seen a whole lot of enemy artillery this battle. Alright, those guys are in no man's land getting shot up. Can these guys actually move through that trench line? I don't think they could. Well, now they're moving through the open. That's not great. I thought there was a comms trench here. I misread the map. Get out of the open. Right, let's bring some reinforcements up. Are these guys just going to mill around, or do they not know what they want to do? I'll shell them if they want to sit there. Once we clear these two units, we should be able to start uh, taking the objective. We are. Which will pause the clock for the moment. I just dropped Artie on my own men. Gonna cornwall us him. Right, those boys moved up into the trench line. Let's move these guys forward. Let's actually pause here for a second. Let's get these boys forward so we can prepare for the assault on the enemy. This next trench line. Because we're going to need to assault up here toward the command trench. And then we'll have to shift west to deal with A. But we've already done a considerable amount of damage to the enemy here. That's my artillery, right? Or is that theirs? I don't even know. Right. Let's withdraw the troops that we get some cash back for. Where are they going? Can I just fight you guys? I just want to destroy you. Come back here, Frenchies. Alright, we took the... We can reinforce from up here. Nice. Let's send a conscript unit forward. Let's get a, a scout out there. See what the enemy has. We'll withdraw the units that are somewhat beat up, or at least fairly beat up. Not the ones who are still in good shape, but the other ones. And we'll scout out here and see what the enemy has. This trench line doesn't extend all the way to this wood line, which makes it feel like we should be able to break into the enemy trench line without too much hassle. In fact, I'm going to start that now. I don't have a ton of time. I also don't have a ton of room. Probably use light artillery to suppress what's ever in this trench line, too. Okay. 
Okay, so our conscripts are scouting forward. No sign of any enemy MGs on this line. Keep hitting the troops adjacent. Thirty. Send them through piecemeal until we have an, an actual sort of bridge head established. There we go. Should have this one now. Get your Discover Troops cash back card now. God damn right. Got suppression going on those boys, so we're gonna do a frontal with these units. They're gonna move forward and attack me, huh? Okay. I don't think their troops are gonna last long. Two versus one. Flamethrower troops should not be used in melee AI. Do not use them like that. They need to be outside the trench so they can flame down the trench. Whatever. I'm not gonna complain. Just saying. Go attack these guns. Knock out their artillery. Check out this bunker. See if there's anyone in there. All right. We destroyed their artillery pieces back here. Let's go see if these re rear trenches are occupied. I don't think they are. Alright, push forward boys, push forward economically. I don't know if I'm getting better at this or if it if like we're just are we just being smarter about moving troops through trenches and not over the top and moving units one at a time so that they don't you know leap out of the trench and die or is the enemy getting worse I, I don't know if we're getting better or if they're getting worse right. you guys are gonna die but go attack the command trench enemy they're dead. So actually, a big chunk of their supply just went. All right, let's advance these boys forward. You're saying it's both, a little bit of both. Go take that command trench. And you guys advance to the bunker. We'll call in some elite troops. Max our stack out, and we may be on the verge, folks. We still, we still have to take the rest of this hex in just a few minutes. We've got about ten minutes left, but it does feel like we are on the verge here. So we are being defeated in the command trench slowly. Although these guys might be, they might, they might triumph here. Yeah, all right, so that one one unit is taking the command trench. We are advancing into the enemy lines. Oh no, they're out of the trenches. Flamethrower troops, where we don't want them. Oh wait, they didn't flame, they just jumped right in. Hey, I. Achtung! Wir haben neue Befehle. Bereit an der Linie. 
And I need more troops forward here. Everybody! Move! Move! Get up! Now is your time! The command trench is being taken, right? Yeah. So, we don't actually need more troops there. We don't want more troops there because I believe the number of troops you have there influences how quickly you take the command trench. Think? Why do these enemies get out of the trench? Oh, flamethrowers! Like the flamethrower troops getting out of the trench kind of makes sense. But I'm not sure otherwise why they would. These guys are going to get overrun in the... Forwards! For God's sakes, forwards! Alright, so the clock is paused because the enemy is losing a, an objective. Established here. Should we move? I think we're going to move forward with these troops in this line to the south. I think the enemy is going to abandon their forward trenches here. Not 100% sure of that, so we will do a rolling barrage here. They haven't fully abandoned them, I can see. Oh god. Well, that's not great. They left troops in there. Move to the right. Alright, our troops did make it though. So we did get in the trench line. Let's get over there. Let's go. Let's go take A. We're kind of hitting them all over at once. I clear this trench. I don't think the enemy has m many troops left. This, what they have on the map might be it. Right, let's... Can we hit this? I don't think we can hit... I think all of our units are out of range of this trench mortar. I'm going to move these guys out into no man's land got a whole line of more troops coming forward here. Alright, these troops are going to move forward and get that with their grenades, and this should be all but over. Push forward to the, get this last enemy fixed position. Knock out these enemy flame troops, and I think that's it. I think that's going to be all they have left. We are taking A. They don't have any reinforcements. This is not an Ultimate General-related game, Gravy. This is made by Petroglyph, uh, who made uh, Star Wars Empire at War way back in the day, and Grey Goo, and, and a couple of other RTS-style games. All right, but we are taking the final objective. The enemy has no troops left. They just seemed outclassed. Like, I, you know, and again, we had considerably more resources they, than they did in this battle. So I don't know 
how much their previous losses uh, play into this. Like, I, I don't... I don't know because in the first battle in this turn at at uh, Epra they did well, but the last two they have not. So a sweep at Epra that should that'll make the hex ours. So that is a major victory for Germany. That is the third hex we've taken from the enemy. We spent about nine hundred gold. We lost about what is that one hundred fifty thirty seven. So we lost about. 5,700 troops or so. The enemy lost less men. They actually lost fewer men than we did. 5,300 infantry, 88 raiders, 74 flamethrowers. So they really didn't deploy a whole lot of troops there. Uh, they did lose 10 field artillery pieces, or heavy artillery pieces. So they lost more value than we did. They also lost one balloon. So that was a, a very clear victory for us. Another negative 20 morale for them. Another plus 20 for us, or plus 8 for us. So their their national will is going to be taking a bit of a, a b bit of a hit. Meta Bar, thanks for the follow. Ripcords, thanks for the follow. OTRC or OTR champion, thank you for the follow. And uh, that's another victory. Ten and negative twenty three hundred eighty two supply spent. So really not that much supply. We can continue that offensive next turn. Epra has fallen. Our forces have captured Epra, the region of Belgium. With this effort, near all, nearly all of Belgium is controlled by the Central Powers. This will deal a great blow to the morale of the Allies. Okay. Didn't didn't tell me it was a great blow to the Allies, but I guess it, it is. And uh, now Dunkirk is in our grasp. Actually, I'm pretty sure all, but if we take Dunkirk, then the last little sliver of Belgium, even though Dunkirk is obviously France, you can see it looks like there's one little sliver in this hex of Belgium that is still left. Uh, with the fall, I don't think I can move any of these guys. I can move the troops at Ghent. Yeah, I can move the troops at Ghent and Epra. Can't move any of these other tanks and other things like that. So we're not going to take... It's not going to be a Blitzkrieg, boys. We're not going to take Dunkirk right away. We didn't get to move all those troops forward. We can probably... I'm thinking maybe successfully attack Dunkirk out of Hazebrook. But uh, I don't think the enemy's going to have any resources anyway to launch, a, launch an attack on on us this turn but we've already attacked out of Hazebrook, Lille and Odenard the only real like considerable deployment of our troops left that possibly could launch an attack um, other than like maybe small spoiling attacks would be maybe Arras against Amines but that's not I'm, I'm trying to focus on taking Calais before before the Americans show up. So I, I think Dunkirk and then Calais, those are the two objectives for the, the rest of the summer. Let's go ahead and end the turn and see what the uh, AI has in store for us, if anything. What's my favorite strategy game of all time? Probably Sid Meier's Gettysburg. But, that, but that's an oldie. Uh, August 1917, gold reserves plus 1,600 research points too. Uh, Civil War Generals 2 is also very good. All right, so we get our reinforcement of gold. There's two unread events. Hello, girls. Facing poor communications after reaching France, General Pershing tried and failed to find qualified men to run the telephone system, but I had a plan to remedy the situation. After seeing how women filled in at home during the war, I now feel that if women can serve in roles away from the battlefield, it'll free up more men for the front. Pershing's request created the Signal Corps, Female Telephone Operators Unit. But our boys in France call them the Hello Girls. These elite women were experienced switchboard operators who were fluent in French. 223 women were chosen from about 7,000. Wow, that's, that's a selective process. Once in the place, the value of their service was soon realized as the number of calls tripled. Are they doing communications for the military? Like, why do you want the calls to triple? Or is it just capacity? I, okay. <laughs> nice emote there, charcoal. I'm the first YouTube result for Sid Meier's... How do you not know? Sid Meier's Gettysburg is Sid Meier's greatest game ever. And yes, I know he, he made the Civ games. Um, the Americans have landed in France and seek to push us back, but their troops are green and untested. Show them playing, show them playing soldier on foreign shores is a mistake and they should go back across the Atlantic. Um, okay. So if we defeat three American companies, we get 400 gold. All right. Where are they though? They're probably in Paris, right? That's usually where they deploy. I think 
No sign of any large... Like, the Americans show up in small numbers, I think, until 1918 in this game. Certainly that was true historically. We don't we don't see any large concentration of forces away from... I mean, they could be like make... They could make up elements of this because there's disunity of command at Calais and Dunkirk, which means that like the allies are mixing their, their forces in. In any event. Um, all right. So Dunkirk has 11 cores. That is going to be an ass to attack. 15 cores at Calais. 10 at Bray. Oh, God. All right, so Epra, we need to upgrade to a, a... Oh, my God, we don't get anything from the Allies. We took the Hex, but, like, I guess we get a level... Oh, we don't even get... Do we not even get a level 1 depot? No, it's a level 1 depot now. We can increase it to 2. Let's get the Field Hospital, 800 gold. That'll make it better at uh, replacing casualties. Okay. I'm wondering if we wait to attack. Because I don't even know if I can... Attack at a hazard. Oh, I can. It's raining, but we can. Um, got two research points we can spend. What does this do? Increase cannon damage for the Sturm Panzerwagen. Increase supply granted to tank battalions. Reduces replenishment cost of surviving tanks by 40. Like after the battle. Um, we could do smoke. We could save up for mustard gas. Go for razor wire. What, what would be useful on the offensive? We don't have bombers yet. Let's get them. Okay. Tanks, tanks, tanks. Right, we are going to move all of these troops at Odenard to Epra. Okay, so that increases our force at Epra to six cores, plus five more, four more coming. That's ten infantry cores, one tank battalion, one aviation. We're going to take the the tank from Lille and add it to Epra, so we'll have two battalions in both Epra and Hazebrook. Hazebrook currently has 1,900 supply. So that's, well, that's not counting the new troops yet. Man, Epper is going to be massively stacked. All right, so that'll be 4, 8, 13, 14. 14 infantry corps, an aviation corps, and two tank battalions. Hazebrook has what? 9, 10. So we should increase the amount of troops at Hazebrook by four cores. At least the three cores there. He's Bricardia Siege Artillery, so move that to Epra. And the Air Wing to I don't know. He's a brick, I guess. Alright, so we are pushing forward with maximum forces in the north. The enemy does not look ready to attack anywhere else based on what we're looking at right now. It is August. How much artillery do we have here? We've got... Honestly, let's build that second hospital at Epra. That's so much gold. Is airburst artillery any good? I've heard it's not, but it also depends on the trench type, right? We should at least get the level 2 depot at Epra. We'll need that. And then do we want to buy anything? Do we want to buy like another tank battalion or aviation battalion or... Supply is okay, I think. Let's buy a second. We'll have two aviations at Epra and two at Hazebrook. Buy another aviation wing. They show up right away, right? Let's just hope they don't attack anywhere else, because we are putting literally all our eggs in this northern basket. 
Yeah, we'll have six at the next battle, though. We'll have two battalions of tanks in each, so that'll be six tanks each, up to six tanks each. All right. So that does it from a gold perspective. We need to wait. We can't afford to attack here. We're going to wait till September. All right, September 1917, two more research points, 1,600 more gold. The Logan Riot, a riot resulting in 16 dead and 22 injured occurred in Houston, where a regiment of black soldiers took up arms against local police and citizens. While local authorities claim the soldiers were responsible, outside sources say that the riots were instigated by several local police officers and citizens who wrongfully arrested, beat, and detained the soldiers and their families. Is that? I hope that hurts their morale. Perform three days of siege barrage and we get 700 supply, huh? Okay, well, I know you guys have said, or some folks in the chat have said siege artillery is a waste of supply, but if you're going to give me 700 supply, I'll, I'll take it. All right, so good weather, good fall weather, no rain here at Dunkirk, which is where we're going to attack next. The enemy has 11 cores here, so they're going to have considerable resources. Meanwhile, we have 2,400 regional supply, 600 from the supply pipeline. So 3,000 supply to bring in. Two tank battalions, nine infantry corps, an elite corps, four conscript corps. So 14 corps of infantry, one siege artillery battalion, two German air wing, or a German air wing, and two tank battalions here at EPRA. At Hazebrook, we have three aviation units. I thought, okay, I mixed that up. Hazelbrook, three aviation battalions, two siege artillery battalions, a conscript corps, six elite, six infantry. Wow, Hazelbrook's way stronger. 2,500 local supplies, 600. Although the supply is interesting, not that, not that different. All right, with that being said, guys, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, our next video, we will begin the assault on Gun Dunkirk. But until then, uh, we're going to wrap this video up here. We have taken EPRO. We have made a lot of progress in this conflict, and the Allies are not doing well. The Central Powers and the Germans and yours truly are doing very well. Uh, but we'll see how things play out in the next episode. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying I hope you're enjoying this series. And until next time, I'm out.